What's up guys? This is Derek from MorePlaysMoreDates.com. Today we're going to be talking about are SARMs a bad idea if you already have low natural testosterone levels? A lot of times I'll get, you know, emails or messages from guys who are, you know, in their 40s and their 50s and they're looking into, you know, SARM experimentation for the first time. They're asking me for my recommendations on stuff. And then I ask them if they've had blood work done to see where their testosterone levels are and they say no. And they say, why is that relevant? And I'm going to talk to you quickly about why I think SARMs are a bad idea if you have low natural levels. Basically, as you age and you get into your 30s, your natural testosterone levels start to decline. And how much of that is is about 1% per year, if I recall correctly. I may be wrong, but I think that is the statistic. You know, you can imagine by the time you get into your 40s and 50s, you're already, you know, operating with very suboptimal endocrine function. And as you get even older, it gets worse and worse and worse. So hormones and replacement therapy are a super uneducated topic, especially in the medical community and general physicians generally don't know jack shit about them, to be honest, which is why I suggest seeing an endocrinologist at least. And then hopefully you have a smart one. Because there are a lot of dumb doctors out there, regardless if they have PhDs or not. It doesn't mean they know things. I have, you know, a degree in marketing and I know a lot of useless facts, but does that, did any of that help me moving into my career in, you know, business and marketing? No, it didn't. Honestly, I learned fucking nothing from school. So, besides, <laughs> totally irrelevant. But besides that, anyways, doctors generally don't know anything when it comes to hormones. So what you need to know is you need to know about how hormones work and you need to know how to interpret your own blood work. So first thing I suggest for anybody in their, you know, late 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, however old you are, if you're into that age range where you're starting to decline, I would suggest anyone get blood work first of all before embarking on a SARM cycle, obviously, but in particular for guys who are likely operating with suppressed endocrine function to begin with, absolutely get blood work and see where your testosterone levels lie. Because here's the deal. When you have low test levels, you're already at risk for low testosterone side effects. And if you don't know what those are, you can, you know, just Google them and they'll come up really quickly, obviously. It's, you can expect, you know, harder time putting on muscle, harder time burning fat, you know, libido goes down, erectile dysfunction, brain fog, all those fun side effects that you don't want to deal with. Let's just say, you know, you're already at risk of those or you may already have those to some extent. And then you introduce SARMs into the equation, which suppress your natural testosterone levels even further. So now you're dealing with a suppressed endocrine system already being suppressed again to an even further extent with SARMs, which are just exacerbating the side effects that you initially had or were on the brink of having. And then once you finish that SARM cycle where you may very likely encounter a myriad of low testosterone related side effects because you're just like plummeted your natural levels even further, now you have to PCT super aggressively to fully recover. And once you recover, you're just recovering to those suboptimal levels that you were initially at, hopefully. And you may not, like you're, the, it's just, to me, it's a bad idea to put it, to put it simply. So what I would advise is seeing a doctor, first of all, and getting your bloods done for total testosterone and free testosterone, making sure you get a copy of those results so you can interpret it yourself instead of leaving it up to you know your general doctor who knows nothing about interpreting hormones whatsoever because they'll tell you know a 21 year old they're fine even if they have 80 year old man test levels because they fall into the normal range so you want to be able to actually physically see your own blood work and make an assessment if you know jumping on a SARM cycle is worth it to you or not and even if you know let's just say hypothetically your levels come back and you're at the low end of the normal range you're going to either make a judgment call on if you're willing to deal with, you know, put the potential for low testosterone side effects for the majority of your SARM cycle, or if you think you're a candidate for a TRT and trying to, you know, go that route, and then you'd be operating with a test base, as the guys in the community call it. But what it is, is essentially just 
exogenous hormone support so then you're not dealing with those low testosterone side effects for the entirety of your SARM cycle. So typically, I would advise anybody who's currently, you know, walking around with you know, poor natural levels or, you know, suppressed levels to absolutely get blood work done first and make, you know, an educated assessment on what they're willing to deal with and kind of what would be the best route for them. Because, you know, just like willy nilly jumping into a SARM cycle without understanding how it's going to affect your individual body chemistry, especially at your age, could be a huge huge problem because let's just say you know hypothetically well i already covered what you can expect if worst case scenario occurs but that's just my opinion on the matter you know young guys they can typically you know they take a SARM cycle and they notice you know next to no side effects because they're already like full tilt on the high end of normal with testosterone they get suppressed to you know like low normal or normal and then they take their pct and they recover back to you know their their standard high level of function. But when you're an older guy where you're approaching, you know, older ages, not that I'm saying 30 or 40 is old. I'm just saying, you know, relative to that's the facts of the matter is you are, you know, dealing with suppressed function as the years go on every single year, it's getting worse and worse. Even outside of the realm of SARM uses, you should already be looking into how you could possibly benefit or if you would benefit at all from hormone replacement and then taking that into account relative to if you're wanting to you know experiment with SARMs and whatnot you need to be completely and thoroughly understanding how what a SARM introducing a SARM into your system could do based on your own current individual blood work and your age and your genetic propensity to whatever you're currently dealing with so anyways keep that in mind be smart, be safe, don't do, you know, haphazard things without looking into it thoroughly and understanding the mechanism of action behind these drugs before you just, you know, start, you know, throwing back RAD and S23 and stuff like that. So anyway, thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, check out my blog, moreplaysmoredates.com. Subscribe there. Talk to you guys soon.